Welcome everyone to another chat with Shawnee. Today we have not only a special guest, but a very unique guest who didn't find a home on the land, but rather on the sea. Today we have Lauren joining us and she's going to be telling us a bit more about life on cruise liners. Lauren, welcome so much to chat with Shawnee. Please tell us about where you are, what you're doing and how's life like. Okay, hi guys. Um, so at the moment, I'm currently in Durban, South Africa. Um, I left the ship in March. And yeah, I'm just literally living the life of the unemployed at the moment. And yeah, just become a home executive and just be living life on the couch. And that's about, but that's about it for now. <laughs> so obviously, Lauren's also been impacted by COVID-19 as I have and so many others have as well and that's why we're currently in this unemployed phase but Lauren I know that something's going to be coming soon for you and you'll be hitting the cruise liners very very soon. Tell us how did your interest spark in working on a cruise liner? How did the opportunity arise and why? Okay so um, basically I work in the health and beauty industry and um, part of your studies kind of in South Africa they actually install cruise ship life as part of your career choice. Um, to study beauty and um, any kind of thing in hospitality, I think that any international experience kind of goes with the course itself. So the opportunity definitely came while I was studying. And I always knew that I want to jump onto the cruise liners because obviously it looked like this lavish life, get to tour the world, earn some money, etc. Um, but yeah, it, it, it literally just came as my studies basically came. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> so you spoke a bit about money there. So money mm -hmm. to me means a lifestyle change and also okay. maybe an increased lifestyle. So tell us how is your lifestyle changed from when you were living in South Africa to when you moved on to the cruise liners? Um, so definitely, uh, Immediately, the, the, the year that I actually started working on cruise ships was directly after I completed my degree. Um, so I started about six years ago on, on cruise ships. And if I must compare the life on land in South Africa versus on sea, I think definitely on land you can get stuck in, no matter where you are in the world, but you can get stuck in your comfort zone. Whereas... On the ship, it's literally a case of sink or swim. So you definitely throw it out of your comfort zone, number one. Um, there's always, always, always a challenge. Um, and there's a lot of room for growth as well. I would say it's not a job, but more of a career. And lastly, definitely, if you have to compare, because we, we earn dollars on the ship, so we earn US dollars on the ship, and you have to compare the exchange rate, that's a massive difference from earning um, money basically on land and also in South Africa. So when you're looking at um, what you can basically earn on the ship, um, specifically working in the spa industry, as a beauty therapist, you, you're looking at earning about between 800 US dollars to about 1,200 US dollars per week, which is a massive, massive That's difference compared to... Exactly. If you compare that to an average job in South Africa of an average therapist right now, you're looking at a basic salary between about 7,000 to 10,000 rand. So that's a, that's huge, a difference. huge difference. That's a huge difference. Yeah. So I definitely like would say, obviously, that, that alone is a massive um, lifestyle change. Um, but also the, the culture on the ship is you, you're looking at about over 150 countries that you're basically working with. So it's a very dynamic environment that you're working with. So it's very exciting. Yeah. So <laughs> you said cultures. So you said two things that caught my attention. You said okay. sink or sh like sink or like ship. So immediately I'm thinking Titanic vibes. <laughs> and then you said <laughs> Now, before I move on to the next one, with regards to the Titanic vibes thing, has there ever been a situation where you guys had to evacuate the ship? Like, is everybody trained? Do you do like to help and safety? Like, what is it like? Okay, so firstly, the saying is sink or swim. Yes. Oh, so like, yeah, sink or swim. Sorry. 
But anyway, um, yes, 100%. Like everything, I mean, obviously Titanic's story was more to do with the, the romantic part of it as opposed to the tragic part of the actual story. But um, as soon as you get on board the ship, safety and sanitization is massive. So you are in about a two-month training. So this is besides you going on board the ship itself, every single crew member has to go through a safety training for about two months. So you're training on your off time. It's hours and hours of training. You have to know the ship from the inside out, you know, to the back of your hand. You need to know what to do wow. in a case of emergency. So it's not solely reliable on like the captain of the ship or the officers, which only is going to about cover 1% of the crew. You know, you, you, I'm working on, on vessels that's about takes about 6,000 passengers. So that's about 1,500 to 2,000 crew, which means that the crew has to, it has to know exactly what they are doing in, in case of emergency. So literally we have, um, we call it boat drills. We do boat drills every single week. So we basically practice in case of emergency and we get thrown different scenarios. We get thrown a fire. We have to solve a fire. We get thrown a medical emergency. We also get thrown a man overboard. So uh, in my six years of experience, I've witnessed man overboards. I've witnessed many deaths on the ship. I've witnessed um, rocking of the seas, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but yeah, it's all part of the experience, definitely. But uh, definitely not as scary as what you would see like on a YouTube video, I wouldn't say. Yeah, wouldn't say it. Those things. I mean, everybody, everybody's always like, I don't know how you can work on the ship because it's always rocking. You know what? It's, if, you, if I have to compare it to um, something in South Africa, I would say it's like you're walking in canal walk. That's, mm -hmm. that's the feeling. There's no movement unless you are actually going through a storm. But just remember, ships are meant to basically operate on water they meant to like overcome those um those True. harsh waves you know what i mean so yeah. we always we always safe it's like one in a million chance where you could really gonna experience rockiness um and yeah you just you just have to know how to manage your seasickness that's all <laughs> that's true but have those pulls on board the second thing you said was culture so what was it like the camaraderie between crew members i mean you're south african there must be people from all over the world on the ship you're all working together your friends i'm sure that there's love involved somewhere as well so what was that like honestly um i actually did not know that i have an accent until i <laughs> worked on the ship <laughs> i'm pretty sure you experienced the same thing as soon as oh, you yes. started traveling and they're like oh i love your accent and i'm like what what exactly. accent are you talking about but they're just like they're so obsessed especially americans they really love our accent and i'm just like no man we're so flat especially like the colors you know <laughs> i know <laughs> and sometimes that flat really comes out hard and i'm like i'm, I'm just so flat. sorry <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. But you really, actually, um, working with different cultures, working in such a diverse um, environment, it actually makes you um, realize how unique we actually are as South Africans. And it, uh, because you know, you come here and you don't feel unique. You don't feel like okay, there's anything special or whatever. You don't even That's feel true. like okay, do we do we have that much of a culture? Like you know, like uh, some some. Asian uh, countries, if I must compare it, like they're so deeply rooted in their culture by the way that they dress and the way that they celebrate different things. And sometimes you think, okay, what do we have actually? But mm -hmm. once you're actually abroad, you realize, oh my word, we mm -hmm. have so much, we have so much culture, we have so much flavor, our food is completely different. So I, I love the fact that I get to work with so many people from all over the world. And you know what the best thing is, is that you come together as one for the same common goal, um, working together, you know, you set aside your differences, nothing matters in terms of politics, where you're from, your nationality, how old you are, um, everybody is accepted. And I absolutely love that about working on the ship. Massive difference from when you're on land. Yeah. I can totally agree with what you're saying. Like, I think that I appreciated Cape Town, the fact that I am colored and my culture way more when I left South Africa. Because 
my colleagues, my friends would be like, you're so different. Like, is it because you're South African? Like, I love, like you said, I love the, your accent. I could listen to you talk all day. And I'm like, please stop. Like, this is not so I can completely resonate with that. And I love how you said that just that coming together and setting aside whatever differences you may have, setting aside where you're coming from, just working towards a common goal is definitely something that I've noticed amongst foreigners or people from different countries coming together. So that is awesome. So you've been to so many islands, so many countries. List a few for us and then also tell us what has been your favorite destination thus far. Okay, so... In my experience, I've done a little bit of Asia. I've done a little bit of the Middle East. And mainly because I work um, predominantly out of the US, um, I do the entire Caribbean. So I'm, most of the time I'm visiting these exotic, exotic islands, so such as Jamaica, um, your Grand Cayman, your Honduras, um, Colombia. Uh, <laughs> Belize, Mexico, I go to like literally every single week. Hawaii, oh, I mean, yes. these are all, these are all, yeah, exotic islands. Um, I must say my favorite of all time would be a combination between Aruba and Hawaii. It almost Aruba. sounds like, you know, <laughs> very exotic like. <laughs> Basically, it is exactly that. So, I've fallen in love with the simple life and that's exactly what island life has taught me that um, it takes you away from the city life and the craziness and being busy and getting lost in getting lost in everything that basically doesn't matter and what I love about these islands is it, it literally teaches you to appreciate mother nature and everything that we that God has basically blessed this earth with is yes. your your re- is your remedy, you know what I mean? So I, I love that aspect and um, I love that it's, it's just so simple and everybody looks after each other. One thing that I must say is that I feel um, very safe. That's very, that's very important as a South African is to feel safe no matter where we go because that's something that we don't necessarily experience in our own country. Yes. But I can go to different places and I can feel more safe over there because of the people and just how easy life is, basically. So that is, you know, that is safety is always a thing that we're concerned about as South Africans and especially as South African women. You want to know that when you go somewhere, when you go work on a cruise liner, when you go to whatever country that you're planning on going to, that you're going to be safe. I think that was always the first thing that I Googled whenever I had to move to a different country or a different city. Um, one thing that you said that really stood out to me was the way that you appreciate the simple life. And I agree completely. I remember when, before I left South Africa, I used to do the heels, the matching bag. I used to worry just, about all that nonsense. And now I'm like, can I just take my backpack? My hair's always wet. Like, I want the simple life. I want things that will make my life easier. But also, you care less about the trivial things that don't make that just yeah. don't make sense anymore. And yeah. that's the kind of quality of life that you get when you when you leave. Yes. Yeah. You know? So that is super awesome. So you've been to all these beautiful countries, beautiful islands. Um, You have been home now for a few months, but what has been the thing that you've missed the most about South Africa when you were on the cruise liners? Um, Okay, so I must think about the top thing. Definitely food. (laughs) Definitely food. I mean, okay, so basically on on the ship, right, you have, we have a buffet every day. Um, So we basically get served a buffet. It's called the crew mess. If anybody knows, it's called a crew mess. So basically, you can order from from the crew mess. You can order a burger. You can make your. You can order eggs. They will have even like um, events. Literally every single week or every so second week, they'll have monthly food events. And sometimes it'll be like a South African theme, and you know, and then you see all South African cuisine that's basically there. And then you'll see fit. You'll see fit cook, and it's so funny because. You'll have like these Indonesian, Indonesian and, and Indian uh, chefs and they're busy cooking fed cook and like 
um, biryani and they'll be cooking like all of these South African dishes and mouth of pudding. But then oh, you you taste it. No, man, you taste it. You, so, you get oh. so excited, no? But then you taste it. Yes, see, it's so true. It's so <laughs> like you can literally, you can kill someone with that mouth of pudding. I'm telling you now. <laughs> So this is not even like, you know, that glaze sauce on top or that custard. Yeah. Nah. Nothing. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so, I mean, A for effort, but at the end of the day, like, nothing beats, like, your your auntie's mouth of pudding or your grandmother's yeah. rice dish or whatever. So, I think the food yeah. definitely, because food connects people. So, food also, yeah, food connects uh, people and also it reminds you of certain traditions as well. So, I would say the thing that I miss the most um, when I'm gone, because there's so many South Africans that actually work on the ship, I don't feel like I, I miss the culture because you bring that culture on board with you. But I definitely, I definitely, you miss your family and your friends the most when there's milestones that you are, that you are missing out on. And I, I, I say missing out on because um, obviously you're not able to be there, but for good yeah. reason, not one. But I think that's, the, that's, that's where it hits you the most. When something happens at home, when it's an anniversary, when your cousin gave birth, when it's your sister's wedding day, you know, it's a massive um, sacrifice. But then you also have to remind yourself, why did you do it in the first place? And obviously make your time abroad worthwhile, you know? So, yeah, I would, I would definitely say it's the milestones you miss here in South Africa. I'm pretty sure you miss Heritage Day when you're seeing everybody's busy brying. Yeah, um, that's, sure. yeah that, that's the only thing that I would say I miss. But I, I wouldn't say I miss... Um, the land or anything like that. The reason why I say that is because you know you you know the feeling. It's a familiar feeling. You know already when you come home. You know what people are doing. You know what people are buying. You know what people are saying. You know how it is when you go to that club. You know what I mean. You know how it is when you go to that restaurant. So it's a familiar feeling. It's the things that you, um, the the new things that come up when you are away. That's that's the things that I actually miss when I'm away. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. It's the birthdays. It's the, like you said, the giving yeah. births. And yeah, no, that does get to you at times. Um, I, yeah. I have to leave my nieces and my nephew behind and like they were babies at the time. And oh. it's kind of difficult, like, you know, when they, get, like you said, they give each those milestones and then you're so far away. But like, I mean, you kind of just have to be like, what's up, cool? Hey, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> And then when you come home, and kind of do that whole celebration thing. We're like, we're going to celebrate when I come home. You know, so I completely understand that. Now, in wrapping up our questions, Lauren, what piece of golden advice would you give somebody who's back home in South Africa and they're asking, them this, they're asking themselves a the question, should I move abroad? Should I move and live on a cruise liner and work on a cruise liner? What piece of advice would you tell them? Would you give them? Okay, I don't want to. I want to sound cliche. So, what I would definitely say is um, the fact that you are even having that question in your mind that you are itching to do something new. If you want to explore, if you want something better for yourself, um, or let me rather say different for yourself, the fact that you have that itching desire, I truly believe that. Anybody that has that desire, um, it means that you were born to travel. That is a gift that you were given from above. And I feel like um, if you feel like you, because I, I, I wouldn't say travel because of the money, travel because of mm. all, of the super, all of the superficial things, because let's be real, we can, we, can, we can earn money in our own country as well, you know, if you follow the right steps. I'm not saying it's about, not everything is about money at the end of the day. However, if you feel like you have so much to give and you don't want to restrict yourself to only giving in your particular country, go and travel, leave a mark wherever you are. Yeah. That's what I always say. Leave a mark wherever you are. Leave an impact wherever you travel. Just impact the people, get to know the culture because it's, it's those things that's actually going to matter at the end of the day. Uh, learn a new language. Learn different words out of that language. Teach people about South African language. 
teach people about South African culture, if, if that matters, you know, to you, because so many people has this mindset in the, like, you from Africa? Like, what? You from Africa? You don't look like, like you from Africa. Yeah, you don't look like you from Africa. Well, do you have a giraffe as your, uh, as your pet? <laughs> Yes, honey. You know, so <laughs> I would, the lines will pass me on a daily. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So definitely, I would say wherever you travel, if you have that cooking desire, if you if you were born with that particular purpose, where you are an influencer and you can inspire people and you can teach them about being African and you I can you can fall in love with who you are as well. You're gonna find yourself when you are out of your comfort zone. You are going to find yourself when you are at that airport and you don't know which gate to take and you are just, you don't know the language, you don't know how to find somebody or you don't know what to order on a menu. You know, it's that excitement that's going over to a new place that is ordering that cab, it's walking in Mexico. Those are the stories that you actually want to be telling one day. So I would say just for that, you will have that peace of mind. There's many times where you're going to feel like you want to get on a plane you want to come home. You can't do this anymore because the jobs, the jobs abroad is difficult. It's, it's not the, the low standard. It's a very high standard, I would say. Um, so it's going to take a lot out of you. We, have de- we are definitely sheltered. We definitely come from sheltered homes, you know. So and in that sense by itself, we are going to learn independence like it's no other. And you're going to feel like you want to quit 80% of the time. However, it's all of the other stories that's going to matter. So if you feel like you want to leave your mark wherever you go, leave your footprint wherever you go, then jump on that plane, do it. Nobody's stopping you and nobody can ever take that away from you. You don't ever want to live with the regret of why didn't I do this when I was younger? Why didn't I do this when I could? So yeah, yeah that would be my advice. I love it. I completely love that. Cause you know, I always feel like if you have this desire to do something and it's probably because God put it there, he wants you to go out and do it. It's part of your purpose. It's part of how you're going to find yourself and find your identity and what you need to be doing in this life. And coming from somebody who has been traveling for the past three years, I definitely know that this is what I was supposed to be doing. And I want to do more of it. I can't wait to do more of it. Like once this whole COVID thing is done, and I'm sure you feel the exact same way. You can't wait to book your next flight wherever you need to go to. Um, So that is just so awesome advice and so inspiring as well, Lauren. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your experience. Um, But you do know that you have a challenge, that 30-second rapid questions that you need to complete for us so we find out a bit more uh-huh. about Lauren. <laughs> so I've already told Lauren that the average is six and that I'm uh-huh. hoping that she does better than six. So we are going to get into it. I'm going to share my screen and then... How long do I have? How long? 30 you seconds. Have, you have 30 seconds, my girl. Are you ready for the questions, Lauren? Born ready. (laughs) I love it. Okay, let's go. Favorite city in the world? Aruba. Favorite foreign meal? Um, Oxdale. Jamaican Oxdale. Furthest you've traveled? Thailand. Your favorite South African dish? (laughs) (laughs) Next travel destination. Tunisia. What's the first thing you'll do post COVID? Travel. What are you most grateful for? God. Yeah! You did seven, which is better than six. Well done. Well done, Lauren, on getting seven questions. Um, and I wouldn't say correct, but answering seven questions about yourself. I think it was very insightful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just yeah. wondering, why did you start to on? What's your favorite South African dish, man? Because I mean, you have, okay, so I don't. <laughs> no, I don't have. So I don't. Have, I don't like any South African dish. Listen, you I don't. Me. I think we need to end this. Should, okay, does, does, wait, wait, wait. Does, does Bry count? Yes, because Bry is different okay. to barbecue. 
Yeah, I would have said fry then. I just said malva pudding. I don't know why I even said malva pudding. Anyway, that's my favorite dessert. That is my favorite dessert. But oh my goodness, but thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren, for sharing your experiences with us, for giving us some solid advice, and for also just inspiring us to go out there, to travel, to do the things that we feel is rooted in our hearts. And I wish you all of the best. I pray that God will guide you to where you need to go and that your next adventure, wherever that might lead you, that it will be full of love, joy, and peace. Oh, thank you so much. Same for you. Thank you. So (laughs) bye, Lauren, and bye, everyone. Bye.